The concept of a new world order has been around for centuries. It's been receiving tremendous play over the last half of the 20th century. It is a big idea, a new world order. President Bush uh, said that the New World Order was uh, in, 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 in tune, and that's what they were working for. The UN is part of that government. They're working right now very significantly for a North American Union. That's why there's a lot of people in Washington that don't care too much about our borders. They have a philosophic belief that national sovereignty is not important. It's also the reason I have made very strong suggestion that we need not be in the United Nations for our national security. It's really always the same. You go back throughout of all of history, the Roman Empire, the uh, Soviet Union, Hitler during the Nazism was always saying that it's going to create the utopia for the average person when in fact history always shows that it does exactly the opposite. Conquest and empire is as old as civilization. Babylon, Egypt and Greece. They all built empires in an attempt to rule the world. The Roman system at its peak dominated the known world. Complex governmental systems were developed to control diverse populations. During the period between the 15th and 19th century, new empires emerged and again waged war for supremacy. The nobility as well as the thriving merchant class were financed by a handful of private banks. Many of the great money houses would hedge their bets and finance both sides of a war. Sophisticated intelligence gathering networks gave the financiers a clear edge over the governments they were slowly gaining control of. On the 18th of June, 1815, agents of the British arm of the Rothschild family looked on as Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte fought desperately to save his army from the jaws of a British Prussian pincer attack. A Rothschild agent was able to get the news of Napoleon's defeat at the hands of Lord Wellington to Nathan Rothschild a full 20 hours before the news reached London. Nathan, the head of the British arm of the Rothschild family, put out the rumor to the London Stock Exchange that Napoleon had won the war. Stocks plunged by 98% and Rothschild was then able to buy up the entire British economy for pennies on the pound. When the news of Napoleon's defeat finally arrived, stocks soared. Britain was now the undisputed ruler of Europe, and Rothschild ruled England. The already dominant British Empire grew even more aggressive. Her troops and bureaucracy spread across the globe. The sun never set on Britannia's holdings. The banking cartel funded, in fact, since about 1800, they have funded both sides of almost every war. And of course, they're getting the interest off of the loans that they've given the various governments and the wars that they have actually helped stimulate and create. By 1900, Germany was a rising force and a leader of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, World War I, for instance, there was absolutely no reason to have World War I, except that it was an ideal opportunity for the banking cartel to make a pile of money by funding both sides of that particular war. On June 28, 1914, the heir to the Austrian-Hungarian throne, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, was assassinated while traveling in a motorcade. The Black Hand a Serbian secret society with connections to French and British intelligence took credit. World War I had begun. Armaments companies financed by Rothschild-controlled banks in Germany, France, England and Austria bankrolled all the factions. At least 20 million were killed in the war. It was a conflict so terrible the people vowed to never fight again. They dubbed it the war to end all wars. Question is, why did they want war? Well, first of all, is money and power. But secondly, they wanted to create the League of Nations. 
They had this in their plans all along, and as a consequence, once the war was over or about to be over, they began to formulate this idea of a League of Nations so this would never, ever happen again. Hundreds of years of practice made the British experts at hiding their empire behind puppet governments and councils. In the name of stopping all future conflicts, they proposed that countries would join a League of Nations. Their true intention was for the League to serve as a framework for world government. President Woodrow Wilson, who had spearheaded the establishment of the private Federal Reserve System in the United States in 1913, strongly supported the establishment of the League of Nations. The League convened in Paris in 1919, but many nations recognized it as a threat to their sovereignty and refused to join. Frustrated by the U.S. Congress blocking the League of Nations, British intelligence, with the help of the Rockefeller family, set up the Council on Foreign Relations in New York City in 1921. The Council recruited the best and brightest of American life to support the growth of the Anglo-American Empire. The CFR's stated mission is to abolish all nation-states in favor of an all-powerful world government administered by a tiny elite. By 1930, the promoters of world government had split into two interlocking camps. The Fabian Socialist centered in London, and the Fascist based in Italy and Germany. National Socialism will use its own revolution for establishing a new world order. Adolf Hitler. Supporters of the fascist in the United States and England believed that the military should be used to quickly transform the world into a new world order. All the more sophisticated practitioners of globalism stated that incrementalism was the sure path to world domination. Congressional Medal of Honor winner Major General Smedley Butler went public in 1934 exposing an attempt by the robber barons to launch a military overthrow of the United States. The war hero testified to the McCormick Dickstein Committee in Congress that some of the most powerful men in America had tried to recruit him to lead a military coup so they could set up national socialism in the United States. I appeared before the Congressional Committee, the highest representation of the American people under subpoena to tell what I knew of activities, which I believe might lead to an attempt to set up a fascist dictatorship. I was supposed to lead an organization of 500,000 men, which would be able to take over the functions of government. The fascists had also made deep inroads in England. Edward VIII, King of England, was forced to abdicate the throne because of his public support for Hitler. Though the German-led fascist camp was strong, the Fabian Socialist bloc was able to maintain control of the U.S., Russia, and England. Once again, the elite claimed that only global governance could save humanity from certain destruction. And this time, the elite would succeed in setting up their world body. In April of 1945, at the Presidio Naval Base in San Francisco, the United Nations was founded by the victors of World War II. The United Nations complex was then built in New York City on land donated by John D. Rockefeller. A worldwide control grid designed to ensure the overlord's monopoly of power forever. Our species will be condemned to this nightmare future unless the masses are awakened to the New World Order master plan and mobilized to defeat it. Erected by a secretive group, the Georgia Guidestones are a testament to the elite's plan for a world religion, global laws, with a global court and army to enforce it. And set in stone, it is written that the population never rise above 500 million. Basically, folks, they're coming to kill us. God help us. It's just, they're so evil, ladies and gentlemen.